Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to this revised version of day number three of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to 3D model a paperclip. We'll take a look at how to use the line command, how to create sketch fillets, and how to create a sweep with a sketch profile. Before we get started, let's make sure our dimensions are set to millimeters. In the first video, I showed you how to change dimensions in the Preferences menu. We can also change dimensions in the Fusion 360 browser. To change dimensions in the Fusion 360 browser, you'll have to click on the caret icon to toggle open the document settings. Then you'll see as I hover my mouse over the units, an icon will appear on the right. I'll click on the Change Active Units icon, which opens up the Change Active Units dialog box. I'll simply select millimeters from the drop down list, and I'll click OK to confirm the change. Let's now get started with the paperclip by creating a sketch on the top plane. I'll select the Create Sketch icon in the toolbar, and I'll select the XY origin plane. And Fusion 360 will automatically reorient the sketch plane, so we're looking directly at it. I'm going to draw out some sketch geometry that we'll use later on as the path for the sweep command. We'll start out by sketching a straight line. If you remember from the last two videos, the line command is located under the sketch dropdown list. However, we can also call the line command with the keyboard shortcut letter L, as in Lima. To place this first line, I'll simply click on the center origin. I'll drag my mouse cursor towards the top, and I'll type out 20 millimeters for the distance. After typing out 20 millimeters, I'll hit the tab key on my keyboard, which locks the dimension in place. You'll notice after I hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place, this gold colored lock icon appeared next to the dimension. Now this ensures that as I move my mouse cursor around, the distance is not accidentally changed. I'll now click with my mouse to set this line on the vertical Y axis, where the line snaps into place, ensuring that the line is vertical. As I move my mouse cursor out, you'll notice that the line command remains active, so we can continue to create more lines until we hit the escape key to exit the command. For the next line, I'll move to the right and I'll type out 7.5 millimeters. Once again, I'll hit the tab key to lock the dimension in place. You'll notice that the line command also gives us the degree input field. I want this line to be horizontal, so I'll type out 90 degrees, followed by the tab key to lock the degrees in place. Now this makes sure that all I can do is click with my mouse to set the line on either the left or right side. So I'll click to place the line on the right side, ensuring that the line is horizontal. Next, with the line command still active, I'll draw a line heading towards the bottom, typing out 30 millimeters for the length, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Now you'll notice as I move my mouse cursor left and right, that it will snap into place at a perfect 90 degrees, even if I don't type it out in the input field. Making sure that this line is at 90 degrees, I'll click with my mouse to place the line. For the next line, I'll go to the left. I'll make this line 6.5 millimeters, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Once again, I want this line to be at 90 degrees, so I'll click to place the line where it snaps into place at 90 degrees. With the line command still active, I'll draw a line heading towards the top. I'll make this line 22 millimeters, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And once again, I'll make sure that I click to place the line at 90 degrees. The second to last line will be 5.5 millimeters to the right, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And I'll make sure that this line is horizontal or perpendicular from the previous line. Lastly, I'll create the last line for this paperclip shape by drawing a line down to the red X axis by typing out 12 millimeters for the length, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. 
I'll simply click on the X axis where the line will snap into place. Now if your line doesn't seem to be snapping, then be sure that you have the sketch grid and the snap option turned on in your sketch palette. Now that we're done using the line command, we'll hit the escape key on the keyboard to close the command. You'll notice as we created these lines that dimension lines were automatically placed as we set the lines in place. As you're working with sketches in Fusion 360, you may want to move these dimensions out of the way. To do this, simply click and drag on the dimensions, and I'll move them out of the way for now so they're not interfering with our sketch geometry. Now that we have a rough outline of a paperclip shape, we'll need to round over all the corners before we can use the sweep command. To round over the corners, we'll want to use the fillet command. One important thing to note is that the keyboard shortcut letter F as in Foxtrot is used to call the model fillet command, but that command only works for three dimensional objects. Because we're currently working with sketch geometry or two dimensional objects, we'll want to make sure that we select the sketch fillet command that's located in the sketch dropdown list. And you'll see that this fillet command doesn't have a keyboard shortcut applied to it. As you're working in Fusion 360, you'll find it very tedious to go to the toolbar every single time you need to activate a command. An alternative way, which is much faster, would be to use the shortcuts box. The shortcuts box can be activated with the keyboard shortcut letter S as in Sierra. You'll see that the shortcuts dialog box opens up and I can type out any of the sketch or modeling commands. I'll type out fillet and I'll select the one that is for sketch geometry, not this other one that is for three dimensional objects. With the sketch fillet command active, I'll go ahead and select the top two corners. Because we want this paperclip to have a smooth transition from corner to corner, the fillet radius will be 7.5 divided by 2. So we're going to take the width of the line divided by the number of edges we're rounding. Therefore, I'll type out 3.75 millimeters in the input field, and I'll hit the Enter key to apply the fillet radius. Immediately after I hit Enter, you'll notice that the lines now have a rounded edge or corner. I'll want to next add fillets to these bottom two corners. I'll right click to select Repeat Fillet from the Marking menu, and it's here that you'll always be able to quickly access the most recent command you used. With the fillet command active, I'll select both corners and I'll type out 3.25 millimeters. And you'll notice that the sketch starts to go crazy. In the original tutorial, I didn't cover constraints as I introduced the concept of sketch constraints later on in this course. However, many people notified me that they had problems with the shape of their sketch geometry getting messed up. So I'll hit the undo button twice in the toolbar to undo the most recent fillet command, and I'll make sure that the sketch geometry goes back to normal. We'll want to add some sketch constraints, which will help ensure that the shape of our sketch geometry isn't altered as we add fillets to these bottom two corners. Later on in this course, I'll cover the topic of sketch constraints much more in depth, but for now, we'll simply add a few sketch constraints. If you look at the sketch palette, you'll notice a list of available sketch constraints. You'll also notice that we already have some constraint icons in our sketch, as these were automatically applied as we drew out the sketch geometry. This first line has a vertical constraint because the line snapped into this Y axis. And you'll notice we have many perpendicular constraints in the corners as we were ensuring that our line snapped in where the line was 90 degrees to the previous line. To manually add another sketch constraint, I'll simply click on the line on the right hand side and I'll select the horizontal slash vertical constraint in the sketch palette. Adding this vertical constraint will ensure that the line stays vertical as we retry those sketch fillets. Once again, I'll activate the sketch fillet command and I'll click on the bottom two corners again. I'll type out 3.25 millimeters and I'll hit the enter key on my keyboard. 
This time, you'll notice we were able to add the fillet without skewing the sketch geometry because we added that vertical constraint. And again, this concept of manually adding sketch constraints is something that I cover much more in depth later on in this course. We'll revisit it after you have a solid foundation of some of the other core features that are available in Fusion 360. Before adding the last two fillets, I'll select the left inside line and I'll add a vertical constraint to that as well. I'll now activate the sketch fillet command once again, and this time I'll select the last two corners. I'll type out 2.75 millimeters, followed by hitting the enter key on my keyboard. At this point, we'll want to stop our sketch so we can create another sketch that the sweep command requires. I'll select stop sketch in the toolbar, and I'll hit the home icon next to the view cube to view the paperclip outline from the home perspective. In order to create a sweep that follows this paperclip shape, we'll need to draw the sketch profile that will be used for the sweep. In this case, our sketch profile will simply be a circle, as a paperclip is simply a rounded piece of steel wire bent to a looped shape. To draw the circle, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter C as in Charlie to activate the center circle command. You'll notice if we activate a sketch command without being in an open sketch, then you'll have to select an origin plane or the surface of some pre-existing geometry to create a sketch on. I'll simply select the XZ plane and I'll zoom in on the sketch geometry. I'm going to click on the origin point as that was the starting point of our paperclip shape and I'll drag out with my mouse. I'll type out one millimeter followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then I'll simply click to set the circle in place. At this point, we'll want to stop the sketch so we can use the sweep command, which will actually create the paperclip. I'll hit stop sketch in the toolbar and I'll hit the home icon next to the view cube. I'll now activate the sweep command from the create dropdown list. As we activate the feature, you'll notice the sweep dialog box opened up. If you ever forget what a feature does, you can always look at the dialog box and work your way through it, starting at the top, working your way down to the bottom. The first thing you'll see with the sweep command is the type of path. We have one continuous path for our shape, so we'll make sure single path is selected. Then it wants us to select our profile shape. As I mentioned earlier, our profile is the circle and the paperclip shape is the path. I'll select the circle, I'll click on the path selection in the dialog box, and then I'll select the path in the canvas window. The last few options in the sweep dialog box are okay for now. I'll simply click the OK button in the dialog box to confirm the sweep command. Now if you haven't already, don't forget to save your model. I'm going to hit the save button above the toolbar and I'll name this paperclip. And of course, you can toggle open this location section to choose where the file will save in your data panel. Last but not least, if your paperclip looks like it's broken up into sections, it's because of the visual style setting you have. To change the visual style, head down to the display settings, the visual style flyout folder, and then select the shaded option, which will remove those edge lines. Thanks for watching. If you watched the original version, then I'd love to hear what you think of this revised version. If you found this revised version to be an improvement, then please let me know by commenting below. I'll see you in the next lesson, day number four, where I'll show you how to 3D model a whiskey bottle using the loft feature.